Darian Fenton. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, I'm very pleased to take a call in the third reading of the Land, Transport and Other Matters Amendment Bill. As we have said uh, previously, Labor supports the majority of this bill because there's a lot that is good in it. We support a zero limit for repeat drunk drivers, the alcohol interlocks for repeat offenders, the tightening of work time requirements for truck drivers and the doubling of, of the minimum prison time for drunk drugged or reckless driving causing death. It builds on the work that Labor did while we were in government. We all want to see the road toll come down and we should acknowledge that while we'll have different opinions about how that should be done and where the emphasis should be, we do come to road safety issues, well I hope we do come to road safety issues as a parliament with a genuine desire across all parties to see lives and injuries reduced. And having said that, Mr Speaker, I, I actually resent the implication from the member opposite that Labor did nothing because we take this very seriously along with it, uh, all parties. And they're wrong, and they're absolutely and utterly wrong. One of the differences, the major differences that we have with this bill is the government's decision to ignore the opportunity to reduce the blood alcohol content limit from 0.8 to 0.5. It's hard to understand why this government has ignored the overwhelming will of the New Zealand public and those of experts who want to see this matter resolved in this bill. We did try very hard to help the government save face on this one. We put up an amendment during the committee stages of the bill that would have reduced the blood alcohol content limit. The government voted against it. We have a member's bill ready to go and have had for some time, but the government's shown no interest. It's instead chosen a very long-winded approach uh, to sorting the issues out, which is going to take two years, with the excuse of needing to gather evidence. And, Mr Speaker, I don't think that's good enough. It's funny when you look back and the Minister released his, uh, or the government's safety journey strategy last mar March, he acknowledged that the New Zealand public wanted change. We, we have made progress on reducing drunk driving, but there are still real issues to be resolved. This bill, unfortunately, is going to leave out one of the most important remedies for reducing accidents caused by drunk drivers, and it's going to be put on hold for another two years. Everybody knows that reducing the blood alcohol content makes a difference. To use the Minister's own language when he introduced restrictions on cell phone use, this is a no-brainer. But we have a no-brain response to reducing the blood alcohol content limit, even though the Minister himself tried it out and found out how silly it is. He drank three quarters of a bottle of wine and found he was still legally able to drive. <laughs> yes, the minister did. Yes, the minister. And he said it was crazy. And we agree it's crazy as well. But you have to ask what happened between the time that he drank all that booze and found he was incompetent to drive and said that the legal alcohol limits for drivers were just ridiculous and the time that this bill was introduced. We can only speculate that the minister... You know, and I believe he's a very pragmatic and genuine minister, but this time I think he got rolled by his cabinet. I, he got rolled by the cabinet. They were happy enough to enforce a zero alcohol limit on young people under 20, but at the same time condone a high alcohol limit uh, for adults. That's wrong. Of course we support the zero alcohol limit for those under 20, but what sort of example does it set to them when we say on the one hand that they can't be trusted with any alcohol, but adults can continue to drink, you know, in a crazy way to use the Minister's own words? You know, what sort of example does that set uh, for young drivers? I think they will be very annoyed that the government is increasing the driving, driver licensing age from 15 to 16, while at the same time they're saying to young people, adults know better when it comes to drinking, and particularly when it comes to drink driving. It's a double standard. It's crazy. The, the amount a, a driver can drink under our current regime is ridiculously high. Our current uh, 
BAC limit allows people to become significantly impaired and still legally drive. It's been tested out by people up and down the country. Um, the reporters, there's been many reports in the newspapers about that. <clears throat> and that uh, BAC limit for adult drivers was set in 1978. It's a long time ago. And since then we've had both New Zealand and international research that has consistently demonstrated the benefits associated with lowering BAC levels to 0.5 or lower in saving lives and preventing <coughs> serious crashes. Now, the Minister referred to what they were doing in Australia in his speech. Well, actually, let's look at what they've been doing. In New South Wales, they've achieved an 8% reduction in fatal crashes and a 7% reduction in serious injury crashes. This is by lowering the BAC. Queen's Queensland has achieved an 18% reduction in fatal crashes and a 14% reduction in serious crashes. Belgium achieved a 10% reduction in all alcohol-related fatalities. And France achieved a 30% reduction in alcohol-related fatal crashes. So why is New Zealand different? You know, why do we have to wait two years? Why is it that we need two years more research to prove what we already know? Now, I think, you know, it, it has annoyed uh, the public. They will be annoyed when they find out that the government's missed an opportunity to deal with this. The polls have uh, repeatedly shown they're overwhelmingly in favour of this. And uh, to quote the Alcohol Health Watch, they said uh, not reducing the limit was, quote, gutless and a missed opportunity um, and an opportunity to save at least 14 lives a year. Uh, to quote uh, Rebecca Williams, she said, we simply do not need more research to tell us that this will effectively save lives and reduce the number of alcohol-related crashes on our roads. Nearly 300 studies show driving skills were significantly impaired at the current 80 um, milligram limit and public support for lowering the limit was growing. This is a regrettable failure that leaves our government with blood on its hands, end quote. Now, I'm sure that most members, most National Party members, know in their heart that this is a poor decision. While as much as I said in the bill that is good, this is a poor decision, it's, it's uh, missed an opportunity to save lives. I know that Jackie Blue, for example, will be gutted by her party's decision, and actually I know the Minister doesn't really have his heart in it either. I'm sorry, you know, Mr Speaker, but the government is playing irresponsibly with the lives of Kiwi road users by not taking this important... Well, I'm very polite, you see. You I'm very polite. Uh, by not taking this important step now and instead delaying it for another two years. Then there's the other part of the bill that Labor has had difficulty with, and that is the reduction in the driver licensing age. Sure, it looks and sounds good on paper, it looks good in the media. Let's have a go at the young. After all, they're not a particularly political vo politically vocal group, and those drivers under 18 can't vote. We thought long and hard about this, but the difficulty with this is that the government has grow grabbed a low-hanging fruit approach to this. Let's just put the driver licensing age. The problem is it's going to impact on the rural communities, on young workers who have to go to work where there's no public transport uh, and where their families rely on that additional work uh, to boost the family income, particularly with time, at this time when the cost of living is so appallingly difficult for people. And we have difficulties with this measure because there is no evidence that raising the age will reduce accidents for young drivers. There is no evidence. We're not clear. No one is clear whether it's the age or it's the lack of experience or the lack of supervised driving training that's causing the problems. And we think this is a big step to, start, to take given the impact it will have on the communities I've mentioned. And we do know, Mr Speaker, that the greatest risk for young drivers is during their first six months of driving independently. So I think what this provision will do is simply shift the age at which we have uh, problems. We believe that young learners learning to drive need to have proper education, proper supervision, and we do support the extension in this bill from six to 12 months for the learning license, licensing period before a driver can obtain a restricted license. But the, as I said, there are two problems with this bill, Mr Speaker. We have outlined them. We've tried to assist the government in the committee stages. Uh, we're particularly regretful that the bill doesn't go far enough 
in dealing with the adult blood alcohol content level. It's a missed opportunity. It's a sad opportunity for New Zealanders and road users. I call